where's Godzilla? What are you, stupid? It's time to show the world what you can do. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dynamay, the Daikaiju and Anime Podcast. For today, you got me, T, to the Zilla, and you got the Jason. Hello. And today, we are going to be diving into the weird and crazy world of shark movies. Recently, oh. I have been going through a ton of shark movies, wondering yes, if there have. are any nearly as good as Jaws. Eh, not really. There's some fun <laughs> ones, but so far I think this is the best one I've found. This is... That's quite a statement. Check the, let me check the year. This is... Wasn't it 2023? I think so. Came out... This is a very recent movie. Anyways, it's uh, Koichi Sakamoto's Ninja vs. Shark. And a big reason I thought this would fit well on the Dynamay podcast is, number one... Koichi Sakamoto has done a lot of Ultraman, a ton of Kamen Rider, a ton of the Kamen Rider I like, and this is a Japanese shark movie with a kaiju shark. I think we could call him that. I think that's sure. fair. I, he's it's not it's not a megalodon, but it's not a normal shark. You know, let's it, kaiju shark is it, it'll fit for sure. Exactly. And to start, just to get the plot, all that stuff out of the way, we're gonna have Jason drop a little summary you know basically what you find on the back of your dvd box if you're old enough to remember what that is you know the dvd (laughs) case remember that guys uh speaking of dvds uh this movie's only on blu-ray you can't find it anywhere streaming so at the end of this video or this podcast i should say we will talk about is it worth the purchase is ninja vs shark worth going out and buying to own and watch but without further ado Take us away, Jason. Damn. We got to keep it quick because this is a little shorty here. Uh, but essentially, all we got is uh, all we need for a movie like this. It's a shorter movie, only like a minute or a minute, <laughs> hour 15 or so. Um, and essentially, it starts us with um, this girl pearling, getting pearls in the ocean, seeing a corpse, going back to the village. Um, and you learn that this village is based in pearling, and you also learn that this girl is kind of cursed. Uh, skip forward a little bit. All right, so we meet our protagonist, essentially uh, S A, in a woman. I don't know how to say it, but um, not good. But um, yeah, I guess the village that he was working for didn't pay him. You know, this and that. So we get introduced to his questionable morals. But anyway, uh, we'll keep moving. Uh, we get a few more characters. Uh, we see that there's this clan, the Crimson Devil Clan or whatever, not great people, terrorizing the the, the first village uh, with the, the girl that's cursed. Um, they want the pearls. Um, and then, so then this village incites this, this uh, protagonist, which is a ninja, um, to protect the village. Um, from don't there, they call him like a bodyguard too, I think? Like they're, yeah. Like I don't even yeah. know if they call him a ninja. I, isn't that... I might be he wrong. He says that he's a ninja. Isn't like, it he like secret? Or am I? Oh, I don't. I don't think so. Okay, I I don't remember if it was like on the I did beach. Just watch it's it. like you're the ninja clan or something, and it was like. <gasps> but yeah, yeah. Well, you find out. Okay, so yeah, what you're talking about is you find out later in the movie that he was part of like a village or like a, a different clan that was a ninja clan, and the reason that he's off on his own uh, is because he left that for. Um, uh, kind of questionable things that happened to his brother. Uh, who, he was killed, essentially. And uh, that's kind of... Prior to that, you're introduced to this 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 girl that's uh, tracking the ninja, the protagonist. Um, and, yeah, and then they flash back, and you find out that's why. It's because she talks to him, and, yeah, he, he broke the code by leaving the village. But, but anyway, um, so essentially everything kind of um, culminates or, you know pushes toward these different scenes where uh, you realize that this clan is, uh, at least the leader is from this other past society that can manipulate and control sharks and the pearls essentially help him do that Um, and then he can eat a pearl, turn into shark face, steal the life from someone else and become young again Um, so that's kind of the whole basis of this clan where they're so evil so this village is 
Oh, this is where ahead. this is where I got to step in and ask the question because mm-hmm. I want to know your thoughts on this. I don't mean to break up the recap, but no, we, you're good. We have this this uh, evil clan that has like a member of this ancient ninja tribe or vil- or you know group that could control sharks. There's like one old guy who's able to do that, and he's using the pearls to be young and stuff. And mm-hmm. it, if I am understanding it right. There were three sharks, and every time the ninja fought them, he, like, broke the spell on them, and they left. Am I right with that? Like, there oh. were three separate ones? Because I noticed they're, they're yeah. get, they get bigger, and it's like he slashes the one on the head, and it left. And then, yeah, like, they it... do the chant again. I'm like, are they calling a bigger shark? Are they making it bigger? That was the only thing I was a little... Unsure yeah, I think of, you're I right because so essentially what what T's talking about is uh, the the um, the ninja kind of gets an affinity for the cursed girl, Sayo I think is her name. Um, she tries to go pearling, he saves her from a shark, and then yeah, then that's where we see the clan says something like, um, yeah, he must like he broke the shark or broke the the like the what's the word I'm looking for? The curse, the seal. He broke the magic. The like they the use black magic broke the, the spell. spell there you go i got he you, broke I got the spell you. on the shark yeah so like yeah they're like he broke the spell on the shark he must be a ninja um so yeah i think you might be right that essentially they they use their black magic spell on the sharks and then they probably had to keep summoning more or that means was... there's just sharks that big i guess oh, that <laughs> okay they probably would have had a problem eventually but Hey, hey, we're not we're not like the pros on the the lore for this movie. So, <laughs> if you I don't know if anyone own theories, is. yeah, I don't know if anyone is. I don't know if the people making it cared too much about the lore. Shoot, what was I just saying though? Um, that the ninja's fallen. The ninja has sort of a crush thing on the cursed girl because he relates to her in some ways. Mm-hmm. Um. And then, yeah, and then we said that they, they think that they have to keep getting bigger sharks. Um, I mean, story-wise, it's kind of it, really. It's just, like, yeah. there's people using sharks to kill us, for, stop us from pearl diving. So mm-hmm. we hired a ninja to fight the sharks. I mean, there's yep. zombies and other things thrown in there, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, they can kind of control... Because it's all with the ninja spells. Um, and, and, you know... For a little flavor of why he left the village, the ninja protagonist is like, yeah, I don't use ninja spells anymore. Um, stuff like Until that. Until he does. Um, Until he does. Until he does. <laughs> but yeah, because then you have the final fight scene where essentially you get the girl ninja going after, you know, following the guy ninja the whole time. Because she essentially teamed up with the clan because they're like, oh, we both want to kill the ninja. Uh, but then she just goes after the ninja, doesn't care about the clan, and then... The clan's got the shark going after him, and you get this giant shark in the end with a big fight scene, jumping out of the water, you know, slashing this, slashing that. His, his sword is flaming, slices down the center, and the the ninja ends up uh, ends up winning. And I can't remember what happens with the the girl ninja. Like, the girl ninja okay. got exploded, and it was like super. That's when he used a ninja spell. He like blew her up, and it was all gory. And then she was all yeah. happy to be killed by him. And then the shark guy, like, his head, the zombie girl, like, takes him somewhere. And they're, like, still alive. The Because he's, like, he gets his head cut off. And oh, then, yeah. like, the zombie yeah. takes that. But anyways. Yeah. That's essentially the whole recap. Um, or the... The the ba- that's what it says on the back of the the back of the box. That's that's what. We'll Ooh, say. the back of the box. That's that's good right there. I like that. That's what we call our little segment going forward. Um, um I will you. say though. Sorry, real quick. I will say though. Kind of the kind of the tones throughout the movie that I didn't say is just yeah. There's a lot of the slashing and, and gore and blood splatter, and that's kind of like the director's theme. It seems like and, mm-hmm. and kind of specialty with with effects. You know, with that, I think we can go on to, like I said, we're going to do the good, the bad, and the monster. We'll start with the good, and I'll start this one off if that's okay. Um, Just going off Mm -hmm. that, Koichi Sakamoto knows how to direct a fight scene. 
at the end of the day, no matter what you think about the story, quality of the characters, the writing, the action scenes are very well put together. The fight choreography is great. I can I can second it. And it definitely has that like fun grindhouse gore where it's not like it's not realistic. Like it's not like someone gets their head cut off and it's a gross out scene. It's it's kind of fun. It's hype. They got the blood like squirting in an unrealistic fashion, almost anime ish. It's this is it's like a common thing with a lot of Japanese movies that have like the big spray of blood. But I mean, you watch something like Evil Dead. I'm pretty sure it's in there too. Um, the ending song that played over the credits is a banger. I have to get out that out the way. I really <laughs> like that song. And I like how they had a little music video of like the whole movie, a little thing that played for the credits. And then lastly, I gotta say, with me watching a lot of shark movies recently, a lot of good, a lot of bad, a lot of sci-fi, a lot of Italian Jaws knockoffs, the shark in this is very well done for what they had. You can tell this is a lower budget movie. You can well, tell exactly... Hmm. You know what? I don't know exactly. Let's see if we can... $15. After the yen conversion? Perhaps. <laughs> I have no... I, I don't even... Yeah, I... I don't know if we'll ever find out the budget. We gotta think. Um, A low budget movie here is still a huge budget movie in Japan. So what is a low budget movie there? If that makes sense. I thought before you told me and it was like $15,000 or something like that. <laughs> but maybe not. That might have been Ghost Shark. That sounds like Ghost Shark. But Ghost Shark oh. might have been $2,000 or something. Anyways, anyways, the shark in this, like I said, is well done. It's The CG model is pretty good. It's got some nice detail on it, especially the for the largest shark at the end. The movement is very fluid for the most part it's like well animated there are parts where it jumps super fast and like dives in the sand but you can tell it's intentional that's the end of the movie things are getting crazy the shark's supposed to you know basically be a kaiju at this point Mm -hmm. but i was impressed it was nice to be able to watch a shark movie with a cgi shark that wasn't just like some of those shark movies have such terrible effects and they're so poorly animated they're all janky and i gotta say the special effects in this movie all the way around like the gore all that stuff was it all convincing no no was it all fun yeah so that'll be the last hype they used some good camera work throughout it kind of you know they 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 did it okay it's yeah I'm not I a think that's guy, but... the last of my positives. So uh, on to you for the good. Yeah, I mean, I can again. So uh, sorry, as I was just saying, I'm I'm not into into gore too much, but um, I'm know, not can... into gore. Don't make it sound like I'm into it. <laughs> you I know just, what I mean, though. Like, I like I like gore. Movies. Like it's yeah. it's fighting and and blood. You say you you think the blood splatter is fun and stuff. Um. I think part of it is because it isn't too realistic. That is why it's kind of sure. fun. Like, it is, yeah. like, okay. you can tell it's a fake head getting cut off, and then, like, you know, like, the geyser of blood shooting out their neck or the little, like, little squirts. It's, like, yeah. it's, a little, no, it's you're, fun. It's a little fun. You're right, because, like, I, I, like, I watched, um, I happened to watch the new, like, the reboot, like, Scream movie earlier oh, today. Yeah. And, like... Yeah, like I, I, I just looked away, like not because I couldn't handle it, but just because like I didn't want to watch. I was like, oh, that's just, it's not as enjoyable. I still thought it was a good movie overall. So, but anyway, we're not talking about that. But how that relates to this is like, yeah, I can see what you're saying. It's like I'm, I'm not looking away because it's like it's not unrealistic. It's still, it's still a little bit um, jarring at times, and you know, but, but either way, um, they had, they had a lot of that, but I still think it was like. You know they're going for hype and in like very dramatic and like yeah I'm gonna put my knife against your neck and then you're done and then push through and head cut off you know it's like yeah it's not realistic but it's like it's like oh yeah that's cool you know that mm-hmm. kind of thing it's, he's it's, a ninja it's, it's awesome <laughs> it's ninja versus shark it's like the six-year-old boys rated R fantasy 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. So, I obviously for knowing, see, you could see that the director, you know, whoever, um, like that's what they wanted it to be, and they did a good job at doing that. So I did think it was, you know, distracting here and there the fact that like I was just laughing at it here, you know, like if 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 it went too far, I guess I thought, and um, you know, and the actors were pretty obvious. I'm sure some of it was like. Uh, you know, movies like this, they probably don't put a ton of work into, like, subtitling. So there's probably some words that, this like, This subtitling across. was weird. Because, yeah. like, this is supposed to be a period piece, and there was, like, some modern-day lingo in there. Yeah, yeah. I did notice that. Um, but what else What else do you got for your positives for the Ninja vs. Shark? Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, that I think that might be kind of it. I mean... It, it, even if it was kind of laughable at times, like it was, you know, it just made it more enjoyable, I guess. If it was like, oh, that's kind of funny and, and how bad it is and sometimes. But, I guess going on to that, if you would like to lead the bad for a right. vs. Shark. All right. It's a lot of pressure. <sighs> yeah, well, I can I, start it off. Our main character is questionable. If you want a little <laughs> intro, there you go. He's... Yeah, I can. Okay, yeah, I can take you from there. So, like we said, um, he was kind of not treating this woman the best, and 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 again, like you said, period piece. So it's supposed to be like, oh, in this time, you know, like women just were, you know, their their objects, their property, and it's like, okay, so it's a different time, but still, like, he he had no respect for this person, and and then he goes and and kills the people that are. Um, uh, attacking him because of what he did to her uh, but I guess they were attacking him so you know but what um, a bold choice to be that's how we're introduced to our character we're yeah. supposed to root for I I, you, I won't I didn't love like none of the characters in this are like super standout I feel like they're all good <laughs> like I don't think any are bad but mm -hmm. that it was such an interestingly off choice by the director or writer to like introduce us to him and just have us immediately yeah. questioning his morals yeah i mean and that's why i think they pushed hard later for like this woman that um in the village that's cursed and everyone would you know mistreat her and he's like no i, I see where you're coming from i'm gonna respect you and it's like you know it's like does it line up but at the same time you know they push it hard enough to make you at least at least want him to win, you know, and, and care whether he wins. So, but it was definitely a questionable choice. You'd think they could have at least done it, like, started after the point and then kind of had a flashback of, like, yeah, you know, I've got a questionable past, but I think I'm changing a bit. But it was, like, yeah. Um, but, I mean, again, that being said, um, it was just something that happened in those days you know and, and maybe if we were kind of if like i guess i can speak for myself if i was a bit more sucked in um like i could see that like okay you, you you can feel that this is probably like a low point in his life he's doing work for villages uh because he's got nothing else to do where he, he just spent um, like a week protecting it or a month you know killing people protecting this place and mm -hmm. then they're not gonna pay him he came from something with a higher purpose that kind of, you know, they killed his brother. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so I've got all these amazing abilities and what am I supposed to do? I don't want to go back to my initial village. You know, so it's like, okay, he's at a low point in his life. Um, they, so they've had characters that are like that before, but they don't usually go to the point that he does. <laughs> so, but... Yeah, no. For me, the bad... I mean, I think... At first, I just thought it was weird, and now after it's been some time, I do think that was a bad way to introduce the character. I think mm. <clears throat> maybe, even if we couldn't show it, maybe if you wanted to do that, let us know he's been going through torture, basically trying to sit, keep this place safe. Maybe right. have the wife just be cheating instead of like it being that, just have her cheat on her husband or something. It... It was a bad thing, I felt like. There was some bad fire effects when he was on fire later, I won't lie, but other than that, that's all I'd have to say that's really, like, bad about the movie. Like, everything else, whether you love it or hate it, it's not, there's nothing else that's really bad, in my opinion, but... Well, and, and I guess I'd feel like a lot of the acting is, isn't is very good, and 
um, even some of the effects. But but again, it's it's like if you put it in the context of like you can see what what he was what they were trying to do. You know, it almost feels like you know this guy who is a master class in directing fight scenes like and he does these ultraman and these common rider shows and those have a younger audience it almost feels like he was like i got enough money i'm just gonna make something without anyone telling me what to do that's mm. what it kind of feels like to me like we can make this rated r we can make it gory i can really show off like my talents but we also have you know, with with all that, you also don't have the budget of these common Rider shows or these Ultraman shows, so you have to work in those limitations. And I think when you look at Ninja vs. Shark as that, and you pick it up and you see it's literally called Ninja vs. Shark and it's an hour and 20 minutes, you should kind of know what to expect from that. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I will say, I don't know if I said enough before, because you talked about the good fight scenes and... And I will say I do think they were they were choreographed well. Like I, I enjoy a good fight scene, a little ninja sword fighting, um, swinging this, dodging that, taking out this guy. Like it's it's some good stuff. So, and and they do it well in this. Mm-hmm. He, yeah, it's like he, it's like that was his expertise, and he's like I want to bring that to a movie, where, um, yeah, like you said, where it's it like have it's to like. Um, Godzilla Final Wars. People will say that movie's awesome because when Godzilla's not fighting, the humans are fighting. Mm -hmm. And this movie, you know, when we're not seeing sharks doing their thing, we're seeing humans fight and ninjas fight, and that's fun. And it and it is fun because it is well directed and it is you know well put together. It is a master class in fight choreography on a micro budget. Yeah. Like it's really like the at the end of the day those fight scenes are just really good. Like if you just took those out of this movie, they're a great like example of how to do that with not a lot of money and a lot of talent. But that's enough ninja. That's enough ninja, buddy. Let's get on yeah. to the main attraction. The shark, the sharks. What did you think of our antagonist kind of our giant monster of this movie our dai kaiju this is dyname what did you think of him <laughs> and i'm sorry <laughs> dun 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 I'm, wa- I'm watching the scene right now where he essentially looks like the worm from um dune yeah or like uh, uh you know that spongebob episode with the... oh yep <laughs> he's sliding across the beach eating people jumping out of the water oh yeah that's that's a shark he, yeah, he did. He he just wormed into the ground. It is yep. con- oh yeah, it's his power. <laughs> it's his power. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie. He's a he's a fun guy. Again, I don't you. I guess you say on the micro budget. Um, you know, you've seen worse. Um, oh, he's definitely not. Yes, super professional. But I suppose I I can see the cleanness of it. I like the the camera shots that go along with it. There, for example, um, that like one shot where they first see the big shark and they're like, you know, it's huge. And it comes out of the water. It's not the best composited. You can tell it's not really there, but he's moving smooth. And it doesn't look the most, it's not some stock shark model that I could buy online. Like it has its own look to it. It's kind of gnarly. Like I said, it's got like a lot of like gnarly detail on him kind of looks like he's got some scars and big gills mm -hmm. and they do a good like when he's on land moving around i do think that is like when he looks the worst yeah but they do a good job they got a practical fin they show off in some shots and oh okay i'm just saying if you like shark movies and you're into like these bad shark movies or you know all that kind of stuff this is like a gem this is like a good movie maybe it has a bad cgi shark but at the end of the day i'd say this is a good movie and i think that's the perfect lead off unless you had anything else to say about the shark no i think um, i think that's it i think that's the perfect lead off to would you recommend this movie and would you recommend it enough to say go out and buy this or is it a beg and pray this comes to streaming one day (laughs) You know what? If are are you asking me? You want me to start? I would love you to start. I would love you to. 
Yeah, okay. I, I'd have to say, if it, if you're looking at a $30 Blu-ray, I, I don't know that I can pull the trigger, personally. But, I mean, that being said, if, if it's your niche, if it's what you want, you want Shark and Ninja, then, I mean, this is the movie to go with. So, maybe it's a cop-out, but I, I guess if I had to give an official ruling, I'd have to say, not for the Blu-ray. Pray for streaming. It's on the I... stream. Might as well kick it. I think that's pretty accurate. And before I give mine, I'm going to go over my uh, Critic List review. If you guys did not know, I have an account on the movie review site, Critic List, T underscore Zill4, you know, T Zilla. Find me on there. Anyways, I gave Ninja vs. Shark a 79%, which lands it in the rad category. And here was my review for it on there. Oh my. <coughs> How does one begin to describe Ninja vs. Shark? Raunchy, low budget, extremely bloody, all would apply to 2022's Ninja vs. Shark. Once I saw that Koichi Sakamoto was directing this, I knew I had to check it out. Sakamoto expertly crafts multiple high stakes action fight scenes. They're all a treat to watch. The characters all fill their roles well enough, even if our titular ninja has some questionable morals. The plot is kind of wacky, but it all works well enough to set up each fight scene. The music is pretty good too. I particularly liked the song that played over the end credits. During my viewing, I found myself wondering when the actual Ninja vs. Shark stuff was going to happen. The movie saves most of this until the end, but it's all worth it. The ending climax on the beach is a non-stop action showcase with giant sharks and a zombie. Honestly, I wouldn't consider this one a bad shark movie. It knows what it is, and it's pretty awesome. And I would recommend this. If you hear Ninja vs. Shark and that piques your interest, go check this out. And if you're like me and you've seen a lot of these sci-fi channel original movies like Gator vs. Python, Mega Shark vs. Giant Octopus, this kind of falls into that category, but it's the best. It is actually good. The shark is cool. The ninja is... I was going to say he's fun. He's questionable, but the ninja <laughs> fight scenes are fun, that's for sure. And like I said, there's zombies. There's fire. like this tsundere anime girl character, evil ninja, who's following our main ninja around. She's in love with him. There's a whole bunch of stuff in this movie. It's crazy. It's fun. And like I said, I think it knows what it is, and that's why it works. But... I would recommend this one just because Sakamoto is somewhat of an important figure when it comes to tokusatsu, and we all love our toku stuff here. Our all last right. question for you, Jason, before we end it here, this is going to be the controversial one. Uh-oh. Oh, would you no. consider Ninja vs. Shark to be a kaiju movie? Oh, oh, that's the last question? Mm-hmm. Well, oh crap. If you talk about screen time, there's certainly been less. If you talk True. about whether you can consider it a kaiju, that's I think the that's, question here. That's what it comes down to, yeah. Um, I mean, I said before recording, or maybe it was at the beginning, it's not a megalodon, but it's not a normal shark. But canon might be that it is just a normal big shark. No, that can't be. The canon. What kind of sharks lived in Japan in prehistoric times? It's a, it's a, it could be a Ginzu shark. You know what though? I'll I'll make the call, controversial as it may be, I, and we'll we'll call it we'll call we'll call it a kaiju movie. Woo, woo. And hey, you know maybe not all giant shark movies are kaiju movies, but this Japanese giant shark movie, I would agree, definitely is a kaiju movie. All right, all uh, right. Thank you so much for listening. That was our short thoughts on Ninja vs. Shark. Jason, thank you for recapping and for joining me for this one. If you guys saw the movie, go ahead and let us know what you think. And if you want us to review a movie or anything, go ahead and email us at dynamatepodcasts at gmail.com. Let us and... know if you agree with whose recommendation you agree with. Yeah, because I won't lie, I think Jason is totally right with it is for a certain crowd and it's not for everyone, but I do think it is something that almost, it, it needs to be seen to be believed a little bit, especially mm. that ending like 20 minutes. It's just, 
We have ninjas. We have ninja magic. We have a shark. We have a shark on land. We have a shark person. We have a fisherman. We have a zombie. And we have a tsundere ninja girl. It's all real. It all happened. We all just talked about it. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you in the next one.